Testing, please take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The ceremony will begin in two minutes. I ask that you silence all electronical devices and please take your seats. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 2021 Marine Corps Association Logistics Awards Dinner. I'm retired Sergeant Major Kevin Bennett. I'm the Director for Professional Development and also the Area Rep for the Quantico and National Capital Region. This annual awards dinner is co-hosted by and supported by the Deputy Commandant of Installations and Logistics, Lieutenant General Edward Banta. 
Sir, we appreciate your leadership and also supporting our mission of investing leadership and supporting excellence. Ladies and gentlemen, our musical and color guard support for tonight's ceremony comes from the oldest post of the Corps, Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C., at 8th and I. Under the direction of the 40th Drum Major, Master Gunnery Sergeant Dwayne King, it is the pleasure of the Marine Corps Association to present the President's Own United States Marine Band. President's own United States Marine Band. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of the colors, our national anthem, and remain standing for anchors away in the Marines' hymn. Thank you. 
The color guard before you is unique. They are the official color guard of the Marine Corps. Our national flag is carried by the 40th color sergeant of the Marine Corps, Sergeant Cameron Williams. The Marine to his left carries the official battle colors of the Marine Corps. The 55 streamers and silver bands displayed by the battle colors commemorate the military campaigns in which Marines have participated. They span the entire history of the nation from the American Revolution to the present. It is the privilege of Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C. to be entrusted with the custody of this battle color. Gentlemen, please be seated. The United States Marine Band. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce the President and CEO of the Marine Corps Association, Lieutenant General Mark Faulkner. Boss. Hey, how about that band and that color guard? Another round of applause. Pretty motivating. Thanks, uh, Sergeant Major Bennett. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good evening and welcome to this year's Logistics Awards ceremony. Tonight, we're going to recognize uh, the best logisticians and logistics organizations in the Marine Corps for the year 2020. But before we do that, man, it's good to be back. You know, we, tonight we have somewhere around the last count, uh, talking to Leanne Mitchell, somewhere around 300, 310 folks. The last time that we had this many uh, guests as part of a Marine Corps Association event was about 18 months ago in Okinawa. And we were there for, uh, for the three MEF dinner. Of course, the Commandant was a guest uh, speaker at our ground uh, awards dinner about uh, four to five weeks ago, and it was tremendous as well, but uh, not as great a turnout. But uh, Thank you all uh, for being here. I want to uh, also welcome, just like Sergeant Major Bennett did, the uh, Deputy Commandant for Installations and Logistics, Lieutenant General Ted Banta. A round of applause, please, for General Banta. You know, uh, General, General Banta's here uh, with his lovely bride, Molly, tonight, and uh, we're really excited about uh, Ted, you going in to be INL. Got big shoes to fill, obviously, behind uh, Lieutenant General Sharodi, and uh, not sure. I'm not sure what he's going to do next. There's probably big things ahead of him. Uh, maybe the ACMAC knows. I don't know, but uh, I'm sure he'll find a job somewhere. But uh, we're very, we're we're very excited about the uh, the log community with with your leadership, Ted, rolling right up from MCI Comp. So it's uh, it's tremendous. Ladies and gentlemen, we're also honored tonight. We're very fortunate tonight be joined by the 35th Assistant Commandant of the Marine Corps, General Gary Thomas. Sir, thank you for being here. Yeah. 
Jack Mack, I talked to him earlier at the, at the social. He had nothing on his calendar today at all. And uh, he told me he hadn't worn his alphas in a while. So, sir, thank you for, for being here. Um, you know, we are packed with, with leadership in here tonight. Uh, active duty and retired general and flag officers throughout that, that frankly cover the services as well as representation senior leaders from the joint staff. So uh, I'd like to thank all our uh, retired and active duty general and flag officers and distinguished members of our senior executive service. Uh, your leadership is tremendous being here as part of this, continuing to support Marines, even a lot of you wearing a different outfit because it's in your blood, it's in your DNA. So thank you uh, for all uh, for being here. But really tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is about logistics and specifically about our award recipients. So tonight, we're going to recognize the three uh, best logisticians in the Marine Corps last year, officer, enlisted, and civilian. And we're also going to recognize three of the best logistics organizations across different sizes. Uh, the representatives are here with their family members. So at this point, what I'd like to do is ask all award recipients as well as representative from logistics organizations and your family members to stand and be recognized. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, a couple other uh, welcomes. Colonel Mannion, thank you for being here again, sir, and thank you for what you continue to do. Uh, we're honored by your presence here and your legacy and what you continue to do for Marines. So thank you, sir. Um, you know, we have uh, uh, representatives of the Marine Corps Association Board uh, are here with us tonight. Uh, we have retired Lieutenant General Zilmer. We have retired Colonel Bob Love and uh, retired uh, Colonel Todd Ford are, are with us. They're, they represent really, I think, 24 board members across the Marine Corps Association, uh, retired senior leaders from the Marine Corps, as well as industry representatives that continue to give back to the Corps. They don't get paid. They probably wish they did, but they don't. And so not only do they give of their, their knowledge, their experience, and their love for the Corps, uh, but they also dig in their pocket a little bit and support our foundation. So really, for all the, uh, the representatives uh, board representatives of the Marine Corps Association, thank you for being here as well tonight. So thank you. Um, thank you. Let me talk a little bit about uh, uh, the last, uh, you know, 18 months. And I got it. We're not out of it yet. But, um, of course, with COVID, it was all about health. For our organization, it was all about trying to stay healthy. Uh, and the reason we were able to do that largely was on the back of our industry and corporate sponsors. And uh, fr frankly, they, made, they helped make us stay solvent and continue to support Marines. They were loyal to us. They were loyal with their participation. And truth is, more importantly, with their wallets. And we couldn't do what we did ac across these last 18 months without the representatives from our industry and our corporate sponsors. So please, a round of applause for all of them. Thank you. So a couple of new sponsors to welcome tonight is uh, Jacobs. Also, the Association of uh, Marine Corps Logisticians is with us tonight. Uh, thank you for our dinner sponsors, especially Oracle, Platinum Sponsorship, as well as KBR and the Gold Sponsorship uh, of this event. Uh, take a look at your program, if you could, real quickly. Let me just walk you through it very quickly. Um, as you open it up, of course, you see a bio of our guest speaker, the ACMAC, our agenda, and our menu. Uh, and then you see the first three uh, bios slash summaries of our logisticians of the year. Uh, you'll hear more about that later when we award them. You flip it over and you see all those corporate sponsors that I just re referred to earlier. Then you see the, the write-ups of the three organizations of the year. And just, just look at those corporate sponsors. And uh, you know, look, that's, that's, that's for logistics. You multiply that by our other award uh, dinners and all the other domains that we support for the Corps, 
it's pretty impressive and it, it, it racks up to 160, 170 different corporate industry sponsors at various levels that continue to support Marines. So thank you with that. Um, okay. Uh, a couple other uh, comments here and then I'll ask our chaplain to come up. I also want to thank Dominion Energy tonight for their sponsorship. Drew Warren is with us here tonight and uh, Dominion Energy and especially with Drew's leadership is supporting the LSSA contest this year and it's going to focus on installations and installations as sustainment and projection platforms. And General Banton and I have already had discussions about that and what this event may look like next year with also an installations flavor to it, and I think that's well overdue. So he's already, he hadn't wasted any time shaping, uh, shaping the future. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's, uh, uh, that's my, uh, my comments for tonight. Uh, enjoy the evening. Uh, I'm gonna ask the chaplain to come up here. As for the flow, after I get done, the chaplain blesses uh, our food. Uh, General Banta will come up after chow. Sergeant Major uh, Bennett will give you about a five or 10 minute uh, warning for head calls. And then uh, Sergeant, uh, excuse me, uh, General Banta will introduce the assistant commandant, will recognize the logisticians, and then I'll wrap up. Have fun tonight. Enjoy the camaraderie. Enjoy the socialization within six feet. Have a great time. Semper Fidelis, Chapman, if you could join me, please. Let us pray. Lord, compared to memories of this time last year, we are grateful for this day to gather in this eloquent facility Enjoy the company of one another, delight in an appetizing meal, and celebrate the accomplishments of those individuals and organizations who will be awarded this evening. Thank you, Lord, for their desire to exceed what was expected, to ensure the necessary equipment and personnel to accomplish the mission. Lord, we ask for you to bless us this evening Thank you for the hands that prepared this meal and for those who will serve us. This is our prayer, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen. Chaplain, well done. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the chaplain made Margaret Kibben proud. Where are you, Margaret? She did a nice job, didn't she? Outstanding. Thanks, Margaret. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy your dinner.
Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats so we can continue on with the ceremony. I ask you again to please take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Thank you. Unless you really want to be here the rest of the night. Fun night, and it's good to see you all again, but let's do what we do. All right, ladies and gentlemen, good evening again for the second half of our ceremony. It's my pleasure to introduce the Deputy Commandant for Installations and Logistics, Lieutenant General Edward Banta. General. Hey, good evening, everybody. So, like General Faulkner said, it is so great to be back here, okay? I mean, welcome everyone to join us for the log dinner. Um, you know, the, the last time that we had a chance to do this, Chuck Sherody was in this job. Um, Chuck is at, Chuck and Joan are at an undisclosed location somewhere in Europe, enjoying some very well-deserved time off, but you might see him again someday. So, uh, so it's great to be back here with the, with the INL team, with the Marine Corps Association and Foundation. Molly and I, uh, my wife Molly's here with me, and it is just fabulous to see all of you. So, you know, it's been, what, a year and a half, I guess, since we did this the last time, and, and I've missed so much of this. I miss our Major Bennett, even, you know, yelling at people to sit down and try and get to take their seats. Um, I miss General Faulkner, you know, kind of busting my chops on occasion about things. You know, I, no, you can't have my onions, sir. I, Molly wanted to eat them. I miss the coins, you know, we get the cool coins at, at our dinners here. And frankly, it's just the opportunity to see everybody. So, um, so thanks again for coming. Um, uh, we were at the Ground Awards dinner a couple months ago, I think, and that was uh, over at the Landmark, Landmark Hilton, I think. It was right before, I think, the bugs came out, that we got invaded by, by cicadas, um, and it was a great event. But I tell you, being back here at the Crystal Gateway Marriott is terrific because, again, it's kind of like a return to normal and we're not wearing masks and we're indoors, we're enjoying the air conditioning, we had a great meal. Uh, and so, again, just fantastic to be back. Um, really impressive turnout tonight, okay? And, and I know there may have been more folks in the past, but uh, just seeing the range of active duty, retired, um, uh, our general officers and flag officers that are here, our senior executives, uh, our Marines, our family members, it is terrific to see all of you. Uh, and, and I know General Faulkner mentioned, uh, talked a little bit about, um, about some of our senior leadership. I'd like to particularly thank a couple of our Deputy Commandants who are here tonight, Dave Furness from PPNO, uh, Skirt Glavy from uh, DC Information, and Lieutenant General Eric Smith and his wife Trish, uh, who are here from CDNI. So thanks for the support and thanks for being here. And, uh, and I know General Faulkner acknowledged some of the family members that were here tonight, but you know what? Um, Any time that we can thank our spouses and our family members for what they do and the support that they provide, we just can't do it enough. So, um, so again, thank you for being here. Thanks for your support. Thanks for being there with us, particularly as we went through, like, you know, telework time, and we all know how much fun that was, so it's great to be back to work, too. Um, so... We, we owe a big thank you to the foundation tonight, okay? We, we have not been able to do this for a while, so General Faulkner, for you and your team that put this on, um, and, and I know there's a lot of people that, that go into making this happen, not just for this event, but continuing to support our Marines over the last 18 months when it was difficult to get together, um, but you managed to keep, to keep supporting our Marines and, and both here as well as overseas. So, so thanks for everything you're doing, what you do every day for our Marines and for our Marine Corps. Um, I also want to thank uh, the, the INL team that helped put this together. So uh, Lieutenant Colonel Sabrina Villarreal, 
She was the action officer that kind of had the dot on the forehead to make sure that this went well, and I think it's going pretty good so far. Anybody got any complaints? All right, okay, good. I'll, th I'll take that as a plus. And, and, and the, rent, the rest of the front office and everybody that went, uh, that put out effort to make this happen, to include the staff here at the Crystal Gateway. It was a great meal, great to be back, great service. So again, just can't say enough about it. Um, so tonight's pretty special. Uh, as I said, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of people here we haven't seen in a while. If I didn't get a chance to, to get around and shake your hand, I'm sorry, I'd like to do that later. Um, but just the opportunity to, to meet with old friends, reminisce about old times, and uh, perhaps remember some of those who are no longer with us is a great opportunity. But it's also a great opportunity to recognize what our Marines are doing today, our Marines and our civilians. And you know, despite the pandemic, we were able to get our awardees here um, so they traveled, some, some from overseas, from Iwakuni and Okinawa, uh, and just being able to get them out of, out of Japan uh, and hopefully back into Japan without a whole lot of trouble was a, was a pretty uh, Herculean feat. Um, and, uh, you know, as you might imagine, the life in the Pentagon is pretty busy, and, and today the highlight of my day was spending about 45 minutes with our awardees. Um, when you get a chance, and, and I know that the active duty leadership and retired leadership get this, when you get a chance to actually see and meet and talk with the superstars of the Marine Corps, um, who uh, often, and they're not there beating their own chest, saying, hey, look at me, but they're just knocking it out of the park every single day. And what it does is it just reinforces to me the eye-watering talent that we have across our Corps. So it's not just the awardees, it's not just the six individuals and the units that we're recognizing tonight, but it is pervasive everywhere, and we ought to be very, very proud of that. So um, we'll look forward to hearing a little bit more about uh, our awardees here in a few minutes. Um, so, you know, when COVID first started, the Commandant made it clear that we weren't going to take a knee, okay? And the logisticians in the Marine Corps, both active duty and our civilian teammates, absolutely lived up to that. They were making it happen every single day, whether it was forward deploy, afloat, ashore, supporting training, getting ready to deploy, um, or just managing and running our installations around the world. They were knocking it out of the park every single day, and uh, that was something that we are all especially incredibly proud of. Um, and that was a lot of supporting day-to-day -day operations right now, current operations, but we also have an eye towards the future. So a lot of us in here know that our Commandant has, uh, has articulated his vision for the future. We're, we're, we're sort of in the, the, uh, the near-term efforts of our force design, um, and so we've, we've made a lot of progress there. But there's a lot of progress yet to go. And so while we are recognizing our, our people for their accomplishments today, hey, we need you to get back out there and, and continue to hit those tough challenges hard because, because they are hard and we're gonna need your help and your innovation going forward. Hey, we're also fortunate to have many of our industry partners here tonight. Um, again, General Faulkner talked a little bit about this, but thank you for coming and for your sponsorship for the dinner and for the awards that we'll present here in a few minutes. You know, we all know that logistics can be challenging in the best of environments, and it's gonna get a lot harder in the future. So we definitely need your help. We're looking forward to your teamwork and your innovation going forward, both for our fleet forces as well as for our installations. So, so thanks very much. It's gonna be a team effort, and I look forward to working with you going forward. Um, for Colonel Mannion, uh, sir, it is great to have you here, to see you again. Uh, thank you for coming down. Um, you know, I. I never had the honor of serving or knowing Travis, and that's my loss. But clearly, uh, his legacy continues to inspire our current generation and future generations of Marines. So it is really important to have you here, and we thank you for being here. Thanks so much. Okay, so I, I know you, you came to listen to our Assistant Commandant, and I have the distinct pleasure of introducing him. So you, you've got his biography inside your program, and you can see that he's incredibly accomplished as, a, uh, as an aviator, as a Hornet pilot, uh, as a MAGTAF officer, and, and all that's, you know, phenomenal. He's commanded in combat. He had second MAW forward in Afghanistan. But what, what you kind of got to glean out of that is, is he knows how the business of the Marine Corps works, okay? And Janet, um, you know, I see you nodding, so you kind of get this because you've, you've lived it through, through your husband's experience too. But time in the Pentagon is not easy time. But General Thomas, he's served as our Deputy Commandant for Program and Resources, so he knows money. 
And the old adage is absolutely true. It's not just about the money. It's all about the money. So having him in the position where he is now to be able to influence the future of our Marine Corps, and frankly, just knowing people and being an absolutely phenomenal gentleman to, to work with. And many of you have worked with him or served with him in the past, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, um, so ACMAC, uh, w without further ado, it's really an honor and a pleasure to have you here. Thanks so much for joining us, and uh, we really appreciate your presence. Thanks, sir. General Banta, thank you very much for that kind introduction. On behalf of the Commandant, thank you for inviting me here this evening. It's an honor to uh, be with you here today to recognize this year's superb achievements in Marine Corps ground logistics. I also want to extend a special thanks to Lieutenant General Faulkner and the Marine Corps Association for hosting this event. Uh, I also uh, must thank Lieutenant General Banta uh, and his staff at the Office of the Deputy Commandant for Installations and uh, Logistics for organizing the Marine Corps' participation tonight. As you've already heard, for more than a year, events like this have been modified or canceled due to the COVID uh, pandemic. Your staffs were able to pull off last year's awards uh, presentation, but it was abbreviated and socially distanced. I think we're all excited to be back here uh, this evening uh, again face to face. I also would say to all of our Marines and all who support the Marine Corps that we greatly appreciate your efforts to adapt and overcome so we can you know, hold events like this and recognize these special Marines. I would also like to thank our corporate sponsors for all of their support. Uh, through all that we've been through over the past year and a half. As you all know, uh, this is a period of great change in the Marine Corps. We've shifted our focus away from decades of land-based missions and are returning to our historic role in the maritime littorals in a time of strategic competition. This shift requires profound changes in the way we organize train and equip the force and, uh, in order to meet the demands of the future operating environment. Our goal is to enable naval and joint campaigning across the competition continuum in all domains. This force will be able to persist forward within the range of an adversary's weapon systems while providing reconnaissance, counter reconnaissance, and long range fires. It will also be prepared to operate in small units in a distributed manner, separated by hundreds or thousands of miles of contested ocean. However, in order to achieve an enduring advantage over our adversaries and competitors, we must be realistic about our capabilities and our limitations. The Commandant has stated that logistics is our pacing function as we move forward. What he means by that is that our ability to achieve a warfighting advantage is bounded by our ability to provide combat power, position it, and sustain it. Our doctrinal publication on logistics, MCDP4, makes this clear. Logistics sets the outward limit on what is operationally possible. Now, I'm not about to tell a room full of logisticians anything you don't already know. But I'm sure each of you have had to explain this to an enthusiastic operations officer at some point in your career. Returning to this idea of logistics as our pacing function, we have to recognize that our logistics enterprise is not yet ready to support our forces in the increasingly contested and complex environment we will see in the future. The days of assured supply lines and iron mountains are over. Every action, regardless of the domain, may be monitored, tested, or disputed. We'll have to be lighter, more mobile, and more expeditionary than ever before. As such, 
We must focus on the capabilities, relationships, formations, and equipment that will enable us to meet these logistical challenges at every level. As the Commandant has said, if we fail to do this, we'll have the very best capabilities that we can't sustain. And if we can't sustain our forces, then we can't operate with the persistence and agility that will produce a decisive advantage. The Marine Corps, as you know, recently released a strategic logistics plan that charts our course for meeting these objectives and sustaining the force in the, the future. From improvements in education and training to new doctrine and formations, the strategic plan provides the guidance and vision to make achieving our goals a reality. It also sets out the values that our logisticians must strive toward. Just as our service's core values of honor, courage, and commitment guide everything that we do, our logisticians must be mission-focused, adaptive, innovative, resilient, and ready to meet the challenge of sustaining the force in the future. Tonight's award winners exemplify these values, and by doing so, they are our pace setters, leading the way for the rest of the logistics community. I'd like to take just a moment to talk about our pace setters and how they have demonstrated these values over the past year. Our Officer Lo Logistician of the Year, Major uh, Edwin Powers, cultivated the mission focus and innovative processes that enabled 22nd Marine Expeditionary Unit to divest of thousands of, of items of special purpose MAGTAF crisis response Africa equipment while simultaneously supporting crisis response operations. Our Civilian Logistician of the Year, Mr. Jason Kabutan, demonstrated the ability to adapt at every turn improving MAR4 PACs, air mobility processes, and procedures in response to the rapidly evolving COVID-19 pandemic. And our enlisted logistician of the year, Staff Sergeant Ramon Acosta from Marine Aircraft Group 12, exemplified resiliency and readiness while filling multiple billets outside of his MOS and for Marines of higher rank. Each of these awardees had an outsized impact on their unit's performance and displayed all of the values we seek in our logisticians. You can see these same values in the accomplishments of our unit award winners. In addition to major powers efforts, the 22nd Mu Logistics Department accomplished the special purpose MAGTAF retrograde mission while remaining resilient against COVID-19 impacts and compressed timelines. Combat Logistics Regiment 37 ran with the Commandant's planning guidance and adapted their field procedures to produce a more mobile, survivable, and ready logistics combat element headquarters. And the 3MEF Logistics Innovation Cell has increased their unit, uh, unit's ability to fight now and in the future by experimenting with additive manufacturing, atmospheric water generation, and other emerging technologies and equipment. In addition to our award winners, their fellow nominees and other Marines and civilians around the Marine Corps are mission focused every single day. They're becoming more adaptive, more innovative, and more resilient. Their actions are making our units more ready for the challenges ahead. As we continue to uh, experiment and determine how we will sustain our forces in the future, I have no doubt that our Marine civilian logisticians will continue to set the pace and help us maintain an advantage against our competitors. To our awardees today, these awards represent performance that goes above and beyond that of your peers. Each of you are an example of excellence for others in the community to emulate, and I'm very proud of you. Your individual actions will have a lasting positive impact on our force and are instrumental to the Marine Corps' success. The price of this success is often long work hours and time away from your family and loved ones. This is not lost on me, and your achievements are as much your family's success as they are your own. In closing, congratulations again tonight uh, to our awardees, and thank you to everyone in the audience for all that you do for our Corps.
May God bless you and Semper Fidelis. Again, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 2021 Marine Corps Awards presentation for Logistics Excellence. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Jerry Griffin, and I will be your narrator for the remaining portion this evening. Would each of you please join me in a round of applause for the Marriott staff, the team from the Marine Corps Association, and the Marine Corps Association Vice President of Events, Ms. Leanne Mitchell. Thank you all very much. Today's ceremony will be special as we honor the top logisticians and top logistics organizations for their actions in 2020. At this time, I would ask Lieutenant General Faulkner and Lieutenant General Vanta to come center stage with General Thomas, please. And it's a guard. Great. How'd all we right. do? How'd we do? How'd we do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Synchronize. Amen. That's it. Le okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is a sincere pleasure to recognize the achievement of the Corps' outstanding logisticians and logistics organizations for superb performance during fiscal year 2020. The individuals and organizations we recognize are representatives of countless Marine sailors and units around the globe that significantly contribute to our operational and tactical success, enhancing the lethality of Marine Air Ground Team and extending the operational reach of the MAGTAF. The first presentation of the evening is Marine Corps Civilian Logistics Logistician of the Year Award for fiscal year 2020. The Civilian Marine Logistician of the Year Award is supported by Claxton Logistics. Claxton Logistics provide logistics support, acquisition management, and technical business solutions to the United States Marine Corps. At this time, I would like to invite Major General Craig Crenshaw, the president of Claxton Logistics, to the stage and help us present this award. The Civilian Marine Logistician of the Year for fiscal year 2020 is Mr. Jason Kabutin, United States Marine Corps Forces Specific. Mr. Kabutu is recognized for the following achievements. Mr. Jason Kabutin has exemplified an unwavering dedication to duty and demonstrated an acute ability to concurrently manage multiple multi-million dollar budgets and coordinate, validate, and reconcile airlift requirements in support of training exercise and employment planning events while serving as lead logistician management specialist air operations. He set the standards for strategic airlift planning and execution in support of all U.S. Marine forces operating throughout the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command's area of responsibilities. Mr. Kabutin's impact across the strategic air mobility community will have a lasting and definite effect on the future of the Marine Corps logistics in the Pacific. Please join me in a round of applause. Thank you, Major General Crenshaw, and congratulations to Mr. Kabutin. <laughs> Next is the presentation of the Marine Corps Enlisted Logistician of the Year Award for Fiscal Year 2020. The award is supported by Oracle. Oracle supports the Marine Corps logistics community with worldwide informational technology solutions to leverage uniform logistical capabilities. At this time, I'd like to invite Ms. Greenspan, Vice President of General Dynamics, Oracle, Federal and Canadian Public. Oh, oh you're messing with there. Okay. <laughs> to help to present this award. The Marine Corps Enlisted Logistician of the Year 
uh, for fiscal year 2020 is Staff Sergeant Acosta, Warehouse Chief and Chief and Logistics Chief for MAG-12, First Marine Aircraft Wing. Okay, Staff Sergeant Acosta is recognized for the following achievements. Staff Sergeant Acosta exemplified tireless dedication to duty and exhibited the ability to manage multiple competing priorities while serving as the Warehouse Chief and Logistics Chief for Marine Aircraft Group 12, 1st Marine Aircraft Wing. Staff Sergeant Acosta's superior leadership, exceptional competence, and professionalism were instrumental to the group's success. He personally spearheaded the successful reception staging onward movement and integration of two marine fighter attack squadrons in a period of few weeks amidst the novel coronavirus disease pandemic. Directly contributing to the operational readiness of the theater's fighter attack assets and with zero outbreaks of the virus during this critical juncture for the ready group. Please join me in a round of applause. Thank you, Ms. Greenspan, and congratulations to Staff Sergeant Acosta. Next is the presentation of the Marine Corps Logistics Small Unit of the Year Award for Fiscal Year 2020. This award is supported by Targeted Approach, a small business which provides support to the Marine Corps Logistics and Supply Chain Strategic Analyst. Targeted Approach is represented by the President and Managing Partner, Mr. Joe Rizzo. The Marine Corps Logistics Small Unit of the Year for Fiscal Year 2020 is 2nd Marine Expeditionary Unit, represented by Major Patton and Staff Sergeant Hildigo. Twenty Second Marine Expeditionary Unit is being recognized for the following achievements. 22nd Marine Expeditionary Unit's Logistics Department completed the retrograde, redeployment, redistribution, and disposal of all special purpose Marine Air Ground Task Force Crisis Respond Africa equipment, supplies, facilities, and contracts while supporting crisis response operations simultaneously. The department supported 19 organic and bilateral training exercises across Europe and supported the displacement of crisis response forces to intermediate staging bases in support of contingency operations. The 22nd Marine Expeditionary Unit's aggressive divestment efforts, coupled with its commitment to support deployed contingency forces, reflected great credit upon themselves and upheld the highest traditions of the Marine Corps and the United States Naval Service. Please join me in a round of applause. Thank you, Mr. Rizzo, and congratulations to the members of the 22nd Marine Expeditionary Unit. The next is presentation of the Marine Corps Logistics Large Logistics Unit of the Year Award for Fiscal Year 2020. This award is supported by General Dynamics Information Technologies. General Dynamics Information Technology provides information technology to customers in numerous government and commercial sectors and is represented by Mr. Brian Duval, the Senior Director and Navy Marine Corps Accounts Manager. Way to go, Brian. <laughs> the Marine Corps Large Logistics Unit of the Year for Fiscal Year 2020 is Combat Logistics Regiment 37, represented by Colonel Randall and Sergeant Major West. <laughs> Combat Logistics Regiment 37 is recognized for the following achievements. 
Combat Logistics Regiment 37 advance of service level concepts while maintaining the high level of readiness expected of forward deployed fleet marine forces. The regiment embarked on a series of field training exercises which reduced the logistics combat element signature across both physical and electromagnetic domains. Their advancements in logistics management, headquarters mobility, and distributed procurement were groundbreaking and provided the tactics and procedures needed to epitomize our 38 Commandant's planning guidance for survivability and sustainability of standing forces. Please join me in a round of applause. Thank you, Mr. Duval, and congratulations to the members of Combat Logistics Regiment 37. Next is the presentation of the Marine Corps Logistics Organization of the Year Award for Innovation for Physical Year 2020. This award is supported by Anglico Tech. Anglico Tech is your technology partner for resilient, smart, and secure supply chain. Anglico Tech is represented by the company CEO, Mr. David Cooper. The fiscal year 2020 Marine Corps Logistics Organization Team of the Year for Innovation is the three, third Marine Expeditionary Force Logistics Innovation Cell represented by Chief Warrant Officer 4, Sean Flores. Third Marine Expeditionary Force Logistics Innovation Cell is recognized for the following achievements. The three MEF, or the third Marine Expeditionary Force Logistics Innovation Cell took the initiative to, pur to purpose new ideas, processes, and equipment to develop and sustain operations in a forward environment. Initiatives include the force infrastructure, capacity development concept, the littorial landing craft experimental concept, the Innovation Boot Camp, and the Expeditionary Incinerators concept. The Logistics Innovation Cell took initiative and aggressively pursued new ideas to support 3MAF's ability to fight now. Please join me in a round of applause. Thank you, Mr. Cooper, and congratulations to the members of the 3rd Marine Expeditionary Force Logistics Innovation Cell. Ladies and gentlemen, our final award is the 1st Lieutenant Travis Mannion Award, which recognizes the Marine Corps Officer Logistician of the Year for Fiscal Year 2020. In 2006, 1st Lieutenant Travis Mannion, Naval Academy graduate, experienced leader, and combat veteran was assigned to a military transition team with 10 other Marines that would train and partner with an Iraqi Army Battalion in Fallujah, Iraq. On April 29, 2007, First Lieutenant Mannion, his fellow Marines, and Iraqi Army counterparts were ambushed while searching a suspected insurgent's house in Iraq. Leading the counterattack against the enemy forces, Travis was fatally wounded by enemy sniper while aiding and drawing fire away from his wounded teammates. Travis Mannion made the ultimate sacrifice that day. His selfless actions allowed every member of his patrol to survive. For his actions, Travis was awarded the Silver Star and Bronze Star with Valor. His legacy continues to grow through the work of the Travis Mannion Foundation, inspiring people to live with character and make an impact by serving others. Travis will always be remembered, and this award will ensure that his legacy lives on. At this time, I'd like to invite Colonel Tom Mannion to the stage, please. The first Lieutenant Travis Mannion Award, which is awarded to the Marine Officer Logistician of the Year, is supported by Raytheon. Raytheon provides the Marine Corps with worldwide support for ground combat equipment through component remanufacturing and repair services. Representative Raytheon is Mr. Greg French, 
Associate Director for Raytheon's Logistics Integration Solutions Group. The Travis Mannion Award is awarded to Major Powers, Supply Officer, 22nd Marine Expeditionary Unit. Major Powers is recognized for the following achievement. Major Powers, inspirational leadership, exceptional competence, and transformative process improvements were instrumental in the successful divestment of military equipment from Special Purpose Marine Air Ground Task Force Crisis Response Africa. His proficiency and attention to detail enabled the command to complete the service-directed theater-level retrograde mission while simultaneously supporting crisis response operations. Captain Power's superior leadership, resourcefulness, initiative, and commitment to excellence were outstanding and set a high standard for all Marines to emulate. His influence on logistics community will have a lasting and definite impact on both the community and the service. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause. Congratulations again, Major Powers, and thank you, Mr. Finch, and special thank you to Colonel Tom Mannion. At this time, will all of you please join me in a final round of applause. Okay. Lieutenant General Faulkner will now provide closing comments. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, how about another round of applause for our award recipients? And <laughs> what a great night. Uh, tremendous comments uh, by the Assistant Commandant, sir. Thank you very much. I mean, you, your, your comments, no surprise, resonated with, with everyone in here. And thanks so much for your continued leadership. And, and I'd like to con thank you as well on behalf of the Marine Corps Association. You know. Uh, uh, not only working through these last 18 months, but several of these initiatives going forward uh, to better position the Marine Corps Association for the future and support more Marines, are, your fingerprints are on them. So, sir, thanks for your, your leadership. Thank you very much. Okay, um, what a great night. Uh, just uh, a, couple, uh, a couple of saved rounds here. Uh, one of our newest sponsors that I uh, did not mention is American Water. So I want to thank you for being part of the team. American Water, thank you for coming aboard. And you know, the other, the other uh, omission that I'm gonna pay dearly for uh, through push-ups and, and a bar bill is uh, I neglected to uh, mention one of our Marine Corps Association board members. And ironically enough, this is an individual who was my deputy when I was in General Bantz's position. And so he had uh, D. Reardon's position and uh, he's now our, uh, our lawyer on the, the board of the Marine Corps Association and is just an amazing individual and an even better golfer, Brian Wood. So Brian, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Brian, a uh, serious note, uh, my fault. I know I'm gonna pay for that probably later tonight. Uh, hey, just a couple final things here. Uh, you may have seen some of the slides throughout dinner but let me, let me hit a couple uh, highlights coming up, uh, a couple events, and certainly check out our website if you haven't been there, so that'll kind of get you updated on, on what's going on and, and what's in front of us. The next event of ours is the, is the 5th uh, of August, and that's the uh, Acquisition uh, Awards Dinner. And of course, that's uh, Brigadier General A.J. Pasajan at Systems Command, and uh, General Dave Furness is gonna be our guest speaker. Uh, at that event, and uh, the PPNO and Dave's in here, and Dave, thank you so much for signing up uh, for that, and you're gonna be tremendous, and you were, you were requested by name, by the way, Dave, so, uh, so there you go. The 26th of August is our Combat Development Awards Dinner, and that's gonna be co-hosted by General Eric Smith here, the Deputy Commandant uh, of CD&I, 
and uh, it's going to be it's going to be in Quantico at the clubs of Quantico, and the guest speaker is going to be the N7 of the Navy, and of course that's Vice Admiral uh, Kilby now, and uh, through the processes in the works, I talked to uh, General Smith earlier. Uh, the nominee, if that's the right terminology, Eric, is uh, the former commander of Third Fleet, Vice Admiral Scott Kahn, who's just amazing. And he's going to knock it out of the park. And General Smith, thank you for, for your leadership. And I know the relationship between you and the N7 is tremendous. And the Marine Corps continues to benefit from that relationship and has a lot to do with, with your leadership and personality. So that's the 26th of August, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Sign up for that. In September, on the 1st, is, uh, uh, is the Ammo Tech dinner. And oh, by the way, yeah, look, 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 I screwed this up. Acquisition, General Smith is a speaker. Ammo, General Furness is a speaker. Yeah, we got the ammo thing. So, uh, but look, you know, the, the ammo community is incredibly tight, it's tremendous, and General Furness is still going to be the speaker for your event. One, one, one September. Okay, one more. Uh, one more to put on your screen, and that's uh, the, uh, the 16th of September, and that's the uh, Information Awards Dinner. And uh, the new Deputy Commandant for Information, Lieutenant General Skirt Glavy, is uh, co-hosting that. Where are you, Skirt? I know you're out here. Boom, right over there. General uh, Skirt Glavy, and uh, you know, I, I, Skirt, I, uh, you know, I said I wasn't going to call you by your call sign, but I did. Uh, Matt is his first name, in case folks want to know that. Look, General Glavy is tremendous in that. And let me tell you what, he's already making an impact. The speaker for that event is uh, uh, a combatant commander, the, co the, the commander of U.S. Cyber Com Command, Army General Nakasone. We are really excited about that. So that's going to be a big event, ladies and gentlemen. 16th September, right here in, in this hotel, is going to be the Deputy Commandant for Information. Okay, the final uh, comment here is is Modern Day Marine this year. You know, you've heard me talk about it before, and, uh, and no kidding, it's gonna be bigger and better than it ever was. And uh, we're really excited about it. It's gonna be in September 21st to the 23rd. Uh, this is the last one in Quantico. You've heard me say that next year. In May, it's coming to the Washington Convention Center. Uh, but even this year, you know, the Commandant has his fingerprints on the theme. Keynote speaker, Dr. Hicks, Deputy Secretary of Defense. Commandants, all his three stars are going to be involved, all his deputy commandants, all his leadership is going to be really powerful. So if you're not part of it yet, industry, you should be, because it's going to be big. So uh, we're pretty excited about that. And again, the ACMAC had a lot to do with that. Okay, that's enough of that. That's all on our website. Take a look at it. Uh, final comment, uh, two comments. Thank you, everyone, for being here, for your continued support. And then finally, uh, for our Marine Corps Association team, you know, I think there's probably 13 or 14 of us here tonight. Several of them, Leanne Mitchell, she's one of our new vice presidents. Uh, we have editors of both our magazines. Uh, uh, Colonel retired Mary Reinwald, editor of Leatherneck, she does all STRATCOM for us. Colonel uh, retired Woody Woodbridge, uh, editor of the Gazette magazine. And we have 10 or 11 others here that fingerprints are on, on all over this to include Sergeant Major Kevin Bennett. So thank all of you for my team. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. It's great to see all of you. Uh, continue to come. Tell your friends. Bring everybody. All right. Semper Fidelis. Have a great evening. Drive carefully going home. Hoorah.